So in this video, I'm going to talk about one of the key reactions of thionyl chloride, that's SOCl2, and how will we use it to turn alcohols into alkyl chlorides. We'll go through a couple simple examples and then finish up with a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the mechanism. So when we take an alcohol and we treat it with SOCl2, that's thionyl chloride, we'll end up with an alkyl halide. Specifically in this example, we've got an alkyl chloride. We also make one equivalent of sulfur dioxide, that's SO2, as well as HCl, hydrochloric acid, although these are often not drawn. That's why I've shown them in gray here, so that you often won't see them drawn in. If you look at the key bonds that are formed and broken in this reaction, we're forming carbon chlorine and we're breaking carbon OH. So we're forming and breaking a bond on the same carbon. So this pattern of reactivity, this reaction pattern is called a substitution reaction. And if you think back to org one, I'm sure you learned a lot of different examples of substitution reactions. But one thing they all had in common was you're forming and breaking a bond on the same carbon. And this reaction is no different. So let's just walk through uh, some simple examples of this reagent. Uh, for example, here's a very straightforward one where you start with one uh, butanol and you treat it with thionyl chloride and you end up with one chlorobutane. So we've substituted OH for Cl. Now the byproducts here are SO2 and HCl, although I haven't drawn them here. Uh, you can just keep in mind that they are present, although we just don't draw them as a product sometimes because people get a little lazy. Here is an example of cyclohexanol a secondary alcohol, and we treat that with thionyl chloride and we obtain cyclohexyl chloride. Again, a secondary alcohol to a secondary chloride. This third example is a little bit more interesting. Here we're starting with a secondary alcohol, but notice that it's a chiral secondary alcohol. That is, that it has a stereocenter. It's connected to a hydrogen, an OH, a CH3, and a benzene ring, so that's four different groups, makes it a chiral carbon. Now when we treat this with thionyl chloride, we not only do we replace the break the carbon oxygen bond and replace it with carbon chlorine note how we've inverted the stereocenter so it's it, we have an inversion of configuration and if you think about substitution reactions which involve inv inversion of configuration the one reaction which should pop in your head immediately is the SN2 reaction and so this gives a clue to its mechanism which we'll talk about in just a second the last example i wanted to show was an example that actually does not work but it's important to know why it doesn't work. Here we've got phenol, so it's hydroxybenzene, and we treat this with thionyl chloride. Now this reaction does not proceed. We do not form or break a bond on carbon here. In fact, the thionyl chloride uh, leaves phenol pretty much alone. So this again goes back to the mechanism of this reaction, which is that it's an SN2, and of course SN2 reactions don't occur on sp2 or sp3 hybridized carbons. They only occur on, uh, al on alkyl carbons, sp3. So let's walk through the mechanism here. So the first step in this reaction is we're going to take an alcohol lone pair and we're going to attack the sulfur of thionyl chloride. Now you think back where the electrons are, sulfur, oxygen, oxygen's more electronegative, sulfur's partially positive. Okay, so we're going to add the oxygen lone pair to the sulfur and we're going to form an oxygen sulfur bond. This is going to actually end up breaking the sulfur oxygen pi bond, okay? And this class of reaction is very common, mostly more common for carbonyls, but this is called a 1-2 addition or simply an addition reaction. When we draw the products of this addition reaction, we see we form the oxygen sulfur bond and now we have a single bond between sulfur and oxygen. Now this lone pair from oxygen can come down and reform a sulfur oxygen double bond. Except this time it can displace one of the good leaving groups. Good leaving group being chlorine. It's a weak base. Great leaving group. So this reaction is called uh, an elimination. Specifically in this instance it's called a 1-2 elimination. You learn about this reaction a lot with uh, esters and acid chlorides later on in work 2. So that covers those those next two arrows, arrows C and D. Now the last step is we take the chloride ion, which we had just displaced in arrow D here, where we're breaking the sulfur chlorine bond. This chlorine ion then comes back and attacks carbon one here to form a carbon chlorine bond, and we're gonna displace the carbon oxygen bond. So this is a substitution reaction. This is, S, this is an SN2. And so we form the carbon chlorine bond and now we've got an oxygen sulfur bond uh, all by itself and actually this last detail is not as crucial for us because we've formed our alkyl chloride but 
What happens is a lone pair from the oxygen comes to the sulfur and displaces chlorine, and we end up forming sulfur dioxide and uh, HCl. And one of the reasons why this reaction is completely irreversible is that we're forming sulfur dioxide gas, which bubbles off, and then we no longer have um, our, our, our reactants present in solution. So uh, one little final note about this, uh, the, you can show the proton transfer, there is a proton transfer step which is possible to show uh, at this step between step two and step three. I haven't shown it here, but uh, you know, simply for reasons of space, but that is certainly not an unreasonable thing to draw. Um, the other last detail, and, and you can stop here unless you really want this extra piece of information, but we teach this as it occurs as an SN2 reaction, and that is an inversion of configuration. In the real world, this reaction does not always proceed with, with inversion of configuration. In fact, uh, sometimes we get a mixture of retention and inversion. And uh, just one thing to keep in mind is that chemistry as it's taught in textbooks, especially introductory textbooks, does not always 100% correspond to chemistry as it really is. The use of cyanyl chloride as a reagent to get inversion of configuration on carbon is largely correct. However, there's a lot of exceptions to this rule in the real world. Be aware of that if you take further uh, courses in advanced chemistry. Thanks for watching.